Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series of lectures on CH activation. In the previous learning material, you were introduced to the most important definitions regarding CH activation. In this lecture, I will describe the main strategies enabling selective CH transformations and discuss issues related to the reactivity of different CH bonds. There are two major challenges limiting this chemistry, as in many other cases, issues related to reactivity and selectivity. For instance, in benzene, all CH bonds are equal. However, by changing one of the carbons to nitrogen, we get pyridine, which has three different types of CH bonds. Adding a benzene ring to pyridine gives us quinoline, in which all CH bonds are different. Similarly, in piperidine, we have three different types of CH bonds, and so on. The question is, how can we differentiate these CH bonds from each other when conducting a CH transformation? Another question is, what factors determine and control the reactivity of these systems? You will soon learn that under proper conditions, these systems can be quite active for CH transformations, and acceptable selectivities are achievable. When speaking about reactivity, it should be noted that among aromatic compounds, the most reactive systems are electron-rich RNs, such as phenols and their derivatives, five-membered heterocycles, and fused five-membered heterocycles. The reactivity trends in CH activation are very similar to those observed in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. You will understand the reasons controlling the reactivity in sp2 hybridized CH bonds when we come to the mechanisms of CH activation. Among aliphatic systems, the most reactive compounds are the so-called CH acids, saturated heterocycles, ethers, and related aliphatic compounds possessing a heteroatom. In contrast, electron-deficient RNs and unfunctionalized alkanes or paraffins are quite inert. The reactivity of these systems can be significantly enhanced by the introduction of special functional groups, which I will show you soon. Due to their pronounced inertness, these systems are frequently used as solvents in homogeneous catalysis. In the context of CH transformations, it is important to highlight that, in certain categories of aromatic and aliphatic compounds, Specific CH bonds show markedly greater reactivity than their counterparts. For instance, in five-membered heterocycles like theophenes and pyrroles, the CH bond at position 2 is usually more reactive in transition metal-catalyzed CH transformations. Enhanced reactivity at position 2 is in good agreement with the analogous reactivity pattern for electrophilic aromatic substitution. Similarly, in indoles, the most reactive CH bond is the one located at position 3. In oxazoles, imidazoles, and related fused heterocycles, the most reactive CH bond is the one located between two heteroatoms, as the CH bond at this position is more acidic. Among saturated heterocycles, the most reactive CH bonds are located at the alpha position to the heteroatom. Here as well, the presence of a heteroatom makes the alpha CH bonds more acidic. It should be noted that depending on the reaction conditions and especially on the used transition metal, the reactivity may alter. Most of the studies in this field were performed using palladium-based catalysts. In addition to empirical studies, there are numerous theoretical studies devoted to palladium-catalyzed CH transformations. For many aromatic systems, the Gibbs-free energies of palladium-catalyzed CH activation were calculated and are presented here, with the most reactive CH bonds indicated in red. Once more, I want to emphasize that systems possessing a CH bond with increased reactivity are extremely limited. The first transition metal-catalyzed CH transformations were developed in the 1960s. However, until the 21st century, this field of research was not really popular. The main reasons were poor reactivity of CH bonds, limited scope, and a lack of selectivity. A real breakthrough in this field was the introduction of so-called directing groups. Directing groups are functional groups possessing a heteroatom with lone pairs of electrons that can coordinate to the catalyst. Acting as ligands, directing groups guide the catalyst to the position that needs to be functionalized. In doing so, they are able to address the issues of selectivity and reactivity. Here, you can see the range of directing groups developed within the last two decades. Among others, the most popular directing groups are those based on pyridines, amides, and shift bases. As mentioned earlier, unfunctionalized alkanes are generally unreactive. However, the introduction of a directing group into paraffins can dramatically alter known reactivity patterns. Consider this example published in 2011, the palladium-catalyzed aerylation of cyclohexane, which possesses a pyridine-based directing group, leads to aerylated cyclohexane in good yield and excellent regioselectivity. 
Under these conditions, unfunctionalized cyclohexane is not reactive. In this work, the authors demonstrated the role of the directing group by isolating a palatocycle where the catalyst is coordinated by the directing group. Let me show you another example based on the rhodium-catalyzed alkylation of indoles. Rhodium-catalyzed alkylation of unfunctionalized indoles occurs at position 3. However, the introduction of a directing group alters the selectivity to position 2. These examples show that if you have a proper directing group in the molecule, the directing effects are more dominant than the inherent reactivity of the given system. The introduction of the main directing groups was crucial for the development of this field and has allowed scientists to achieve many challenging CH activations. Here, I present the main carbon-carbon bond-forming CH transformations. Using modern developments in this field, we can introduce aryl, alkanil, alkanil, trifluoromethyl, alkyl, cyano, carbonyl, and carboxyl groups via CH activation. The main carbon heteroatom bond forming reactions are shown here. Using CH activation, it is possible to introduce halogens, organometallic functionalities, amino groups, calcogens, hydroxy, azido, and phosphoryl groups. Each of these transformations deserves a separate lecture. In what follows, I will present several examples describing some of these CH functionalizations. Here, I want to briefly describe the range of reagents suitable for a given CH transformation. This should give you an idea of the amount of work that has been done in CH activation within the last few years. Here, the scope of reagents suitable for CH aerylation is presented. The most popular reagents are aryl halides. Additionally, CH aerylation can be accomplished by using derivatives of phenol, iodonium salts, aryl organometallics such as boronic acids and organosilicon reagents, as well as derivatives of carboxylic acid and sulfonic acid, among others. Now, let's consider the range of coupling partners suitable for CH alkylation. In this case, the most frequently used reagents are olefins and alkyl halides. Additionally, you often come across examples of CH alkylation based on the application of derivatives of alcohols, sulfonic acid, and sulfoxides, carboxylic acids, organometallic reagents, ammonium salts, unfunctionalized activated systems like CH acids, and carbene precursors, among others. The mechanisms of CH alkylation can be quite diverse, predominantly depending on the coupling partner used. The most frequently used reagents for trifluoromethylation include the rupper Prakash reagent, as well as the reagents developed by Tanyi and Omamoto. For CH carboxylation, one can apply radical initiators like azobisisobuteronitrile, keto acids, derivatives of formic acid, isocyanates, nitromethane, and carbon monoxide, as well as CO2. The final transformation I want to present here is CH amination, which can be achieved by the application of amides, amines, and anilines, as well as derivatives of hydroxylamine and azides, among others. Once again, the mechanism of CH amination mainly depends on the reagent used. To sum it up, this lecture covered the main factors controlling the reactivity and selectivity in CH activations. You witness that the most prominent approach used to control selectivity in CH transformations is based on the use of directing groups. You were introduced to the main types of CH activations and common reagents used for selected CH transformations. The next lecture will cover the most important mechanisms of CH bond cleavage enabled by transition metals. Thank you for your attention.